hydrogen chloride has the chemical formula HCl. If we dissolve this gas into water, we then call the resulting product hydrochloric acid. It is one of the important strong acids. Hydrogen contributes one valence electron. Each chlorine contributes seven valence electrons. So we have eight valence electrons to distribute throughout the compound. We can satisfy the duet and octet rules for the compound by forming a single bond between hydrogen and chlorine. And that takes up two of the electrons. The other six electrons are put into three lone pairs on chlorine. And therefore, we're able to satisfy the octet rule for chlorine, even though chlorine is in the third row. And therefore, we can expand the octet if necessary. In this compound, there is no need to. And in fact, there are not enough electrons available to expand the octet. Hydrogen bromide has the chemical formula HBr. If we dissolve this gas into water, it forms hydrobromic acid, another one of our important strong acids. Hydrogen contributes one valence electron. Bromine, being a typical halogen, contributes seven valence electrons. Therefore, HBr has eight valence electrons to allocate. And we can satisfy the duet rule for hydrogen and the octet rule for bromine by forming a hydrogen-bromine single bond and placing the other six valence electrons into three lone pairs on bromine. Hi, hydrogen iodide has the chemical formula HI. If we dissolve hydrogen iodide gas in water, we will form hydriodic acid, which is another one of our important strong acids. Hydrogen contributes one valence electron. Iodine contributes seven valence electrons, which is typical for a halogen. So we have an eight electron system. We can satisfy the duet rule for hydrogen and the octet rule for iodine by forming a single bond between hydrogen and iodine and placing the other six electrons in three lone pairs on the iodine. Nitrosyl chloride has the chemical formula NOCl. We might recognize in this compound NO nitric oxide, which we recognize as being a free radical, and chlorine atoms, which are also a free radical. So we can think of this compound as the combination or the combina um, recombination of two free radicals. Each nitrogen contributes five valence electrons. Each oxygen contributes six valence electrons. And each chlorine contributes seven valence electrons for a total of 18 electrons in the entire system. To satisfy the octet rule for each atom, we need a nitrogen-oxygen double bond and a oxygen-chlorine single bond. We're able to satisfy the octet rule for nitrogen and oxygen and chlorine, but we do not need to expand the octet for the chlorine to satisfy all the rules. A major focus of this part of episode 105 is a group of compounds called the interhalogens. In these compounds, we have two different halogens combining together to form a compound. The first such compound that we are going to look at is chlorine monofluoride. Fluorine contributes seven valence electrons. Chlorine contributes seven valence electrons because they are both halogens. Therefore, this is going to be a 14 electron system analogous to F2. And we notice that we can satisfy the octet rule for fluorine and satisfy the octet rule for chlorine by having a chlorine-fluorine 
single bond. One thing that we will notice in virtually every single interhalogen compound is that the bonding is almost entirely going to be single bonds. We also notice that for this particular compound, there is no need to expand the octet for chlorine. Our next interhalogen compound will be bromine monofluoride. One thing to keep in mind as we investigate the halogens is that the halogens get bigger as we go down the periodic table so that fluorine is the smallest, then chlorine is the next biggest, then comes bromine, and then iodine. Just as the atoms are getting bigger, they are also getting more electropositive. So the further we go down the periodic table, the more likely the halogen is to be the central atom of the compound. Fluorine will never be the central compound. Chlorine is sometimes, bromine is more likely, and iodine is the most likely of the family to be the central atom. For bromine monofluoride, both bromine and fluorine each contribute seven valence electrons so that we have a 14 electron system. We satisfy the octet rule for fluorine and we satisfy the octet rule for bromine by having a bromine fluorine single bond even though that we could conceivably expand the octet for bromine in this particular compound, there is no need to do so because we have satisfied the octet rule using all the electrons available. Iodine monochloride has the chemical formula ICl. Iodine and chlorine each contribute seven valence electrons as is typical for halogens, giving us 14 electrons for the entire system. We can satisfy the octet rules for iodine and chlorine by means of a iodine-chlorine single bond, and then placing the remainder of the electrons in lone pairs on chlorine and iodine, even though conceivably we can expand the octet for chlorine and iodine. For this particular compound, there is no need to do so. Iodine trichloride has the chemical formula ICl3. Of all the interhalogen compounds, this one is probably the easiest to synthesize, and I have synthesized this with my students in the inorganic chemistry laboratory on numerous occasions. It makes a uh, very pretty yellow powder. The structure we're looking at here is for iodine trichloride in the gas phase. Each chlorine is going to contribute seven valence electrons. Each iodine is going to contribute seven, so that we have a total of 28 valence electrons in our system. We can satisfy the octet rule for the three exterior chlorines with eight electrons each, so that uses up 24 of our 28 electrons. So that means that we're going to have four extra electrons, which we'll put as lone pairs on the central iodine atom. Iodine will be the central atom because it's the largest and because it's the most electropositive of the halogens. We notice that for the chlorines, we've satisfied the octet rule but have not expanded the octet. For iodine, we have a total of two, four, six, eight, ten electrons, meaning that we've satisfied the octet rule. And we can verify that we satisfied the octet rule because we filled up all the boxes that are gray. And then we've expanded the octet because we put extra electrons into one of the sort of white boxes here. So that the central iodine atom has ten electrons around it which we're allowed to do because iodine is in the third row of the periodic table or later. I had mentioned previously that this is the Lewis structure for iodine trichloride in the gas phase. In the condensed phases, by which we mean solid or liquid, 
it has a much more complicated structure. It is essentially a dimer. And it also features a interesting peculiarity that is very difficult to model with Lewis structures. We actually have chlorine atoms as bridges. In a later episode, we will actually show a method of using the Pegasus system to model that type of bonding, which is not generally well described by the Lewis Langmuir theory. Chlorine pentafluoride has the chemical formula ClF5. Since chlorine is much larger and much more electropositive than fluorine, which we recall is the most electronegative of all elements, chlorine will be the central atom in this molecule. Each chlorine will contribute seven valence electrons. Each fluorine will contribute seven valence electrons. Since we have a total of six halogens in the molecule, that gives us a total of six times seven, or 42 valence electrons. As a help in building such a complicated molecule, we realize that we have to satisfy the octet rule for each of the fluorine atoms. So we'll need eight electrons each. So that will give us eight times five equals 40 of the electrons. So 40 of the 42 electrons are going to be used up merely satisfying the octet rule for each of the fluorines and binding it with a single bond to the central chlorine atom. That gives us two extra electrons and since we cannot expand the octet for fluorine, we have to expand the octet for chlorine. And that is what we do. We put the two extra electrons here. And we notice that in the process of forming all the bonds, that we end up with a total of two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve electrons on the central chlorine atom. Now, a interesting fact of life that has very little to do with the Lewis Langmuir theory in particular is the difficulties of putting the large number of atoms, uh, the exterior atoms around the central atom, at least as far as drawing it. In, in chemistry, there's no problem because atoms know how to bind together, but it can be a challenge how to draw it and how to represent it on the page. So one of the innovations that we've made to make molecules such as chlorine pentafluoride easier to depict is making the fluorine uh, cards, essentially just folding them over so that we can squeeze them into a smaller space so that we can at least arrange them around the central atom so that the electrons for one do not interfere with the electrons on the neighboring fluorine atom. Iodine pentafluoride has the chemical formula IF5. Each of the fluorine atoms is going to contribute seven valence electrons. Each of the iodine atoms is going to contribute seven valence electrons. Therefore, we end up with a 42 electron system. Iodine is very much larger and very much more electropositive than fluorine. So iodine is going to be our central atom in this molecule. 40 of the 42 electrons are going to be used merely to satisfy the octet rule for each of the fluorine atoms and to link them to the central iodine atom, leaving two extra electrons, which we then place in a lone pair on iodine. We are able to do this because iodine is in the third row or later. Therefore, we are able to expand the octet for iodine. Another way to rationalize this is that once we get to the quantum level n equals 3, we start to have d orbitals available. So therefore, we can go beyond the 8 electrons available in an s and the 3p shells, for example, in 2s and the 3 2p orbitals, which gives us a total of only 8 for the second row elements, such as fluorine. We notice that for the central iodine atom, we have 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12 electrons. So that we've had to expand the octet to form this particular compound. Iodine heptafluoride 
has the chemical formula IF7. Since we have eight halogens and each halogen contributes seven valence electrons, we have a total of 56 electrons in the entire molecule. Just to satisfy the octet rule for each fluorine is going to require 56 electrons. So we don't need to make any special allocation of extra electrons onto the central iodine atom. But we do notice that the number of electrons involved to form a single bond between each and every fluorine and the central iodine atom gives us a total of 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14 electrons on the central iodine atom. This is permissible because iodine is in the third row or beyond, and we are able to expand the octet. So this is the most complicated uh, and perhaps most difficult to build by Lewis structures of the interhalogens that we're going to look at in this particular episode.